Hello and welcome to this first look at the latest version of Ubuntu Studio, which is Ubuntu Studio 24.10, Oracular Oriole. Now it's been a little while since I did one of these videos, I think my last one was Ubuntu Studio 2304, so I've missed the last two ones, sorry about that, I've been quite busy actually launching my new band Foundry, I'll put a link in the description for that, but without any further ado, Let's have a look at this latest release. So if you're unfamiliar, Ubuntu Studio is a version of the GNU slash Linux distribution Ubuntu. If you're not too sure what that is, it is a computer operating system. Think like Microsoft's Windows or Apple's Mac OS. And this particular version of Ubuntu is focused with creatives in mind. It comes packed with loads of tools for creatives, such as musicians, video editors, photographers, and artists, as well as other things like writers, publishers, things like that. Any artistic endeavor you can think of, there's probably a piece of software packaged in Ubuntu Studio that can help you do your job a bit better. As well as those packages, it also comes configured for such activities. So for example, it uses the low latency version of the Linux kernel. Most distributions just use the generic kernel, which is just the typical version. But in Ubuntu Studio, it comes pre-configured to use the low latency kernel, giving you a bit less latency when you're recording audio, especially if you're recording multiple different tracks at once, so you're using multiple microphones, for example. So recording a band, something like this is going to run a little bit smoother than your standard Linux release. As well as that, it also uses things like Pipewire, but we shall get into that in just a little bit. But let's look at our desktop first. This is the first big change. This is the latest version of KDE Plasma. It's KDE Plasma 6. And one thing I can notice out of the box is the very different looking taskbar at the top there. It doesn't seem to touch the bottom. It's almost floating. Kind of like iOS in a way, actually. Uh, I'm not sure what I think of that personally, but I know that's probably going to be some people's taste. That said, KDE Plasma is famed for its customizability. So I'm sure if you don't like that, you can change it yourself. Looking on the Ubuntu Studio site, we can get a bit more insight into what's different about this version. So this one comes with the minimal installer. This was introduced with typical Ubuntu quite a few years ago. Just a version of the operating system that comes with less stuff pre-installed by default. Just as I spoke about the low latency kernel, it looks like the generic Ubuntu kernel, the typical Linux kernel you would get in a copy of Ubuntu, is now capable of low latency workloads. Although you will be able to set in your boot options which of these kernels you would like to use. So you still have the option of both. We have the aforementioned Plasma 6. And a new look, I've got to say, I was never a massive fan of uh, the old icon set Ubuntu Studio used to use, but I'm quite liking the new look. I'm always a big fan of dark themes, and although I don't typically use KD myself, I actually have a version of Ubuntu Studio that's built on top of XFCE. We'll get into that in a little bit. I think that KD is a fantastic desktop environment, and it's a good choice for this. And it looks really nice at the moment. For audio work coming in this version of Ubuntu Studio, we have Pipewire version 1.2.4. Pipewire is the audio backend that's that's sweeping across the Linux space at the moment, taking over from previous systems like Jack, although there is a bit of a weird sort of mishmash for Ubuntu Studio where they have to use a bit of both, Pipewire and Jack. But typically for more normal users, they were using things like Pulse Audio before. We're slowly switching over to Pipewire. It seems to be a better and, to be perfectly honest, a bit of more robust system. If you've been around the music space within Linux for, for any period of time, you'd have probably heard of Ardor. Essentially, when it was first produced, it was an attempt to make a free and open source version of something like Pro Tools, but it's very much become its own thing since then, and it's kept its free and open source nature, and so it always comes packaged with systems like Ubuntu Studio that are focused on creatives, but musicians specifically. So it's a very, very powerful, very fully featured digital audio workstation available for Linux. And it says here, 8.6 isn't the latest release, but it's the latest one you'll get here. You typically can just buy a copy from our door directly if you want the most up-to-date version. But that's not all. Let's have a look at some of the other packages that have been updated in this latest version. And these include things like, on the audio side of things, Pipewire, the LSP plugins, Audacity, our door and Carla. Some of those were mentioned already. Uh, for graphics, Digicam, Darktable, Gimp, and Critter have all been updated. On the video side of things, OBS Studio, Blender, Cajun Live, and Freeshow have been updated. And then things for the desktop environment, KD Plasma. So the actual desktop environment has been updated. The framework, Qt, and KD Gear has been updated as well. Then if we go down to the known problems bit, uh, there is a problem I've got to say I, I found with this is with the installer. Now this, this you're seeing here is on a virtual machine. I'm actually running 24.10 on my actual computer that this is being virtualized by. But just to give you a default view of Ubuntu Studio, this is on a virtual machine. I think this was about my sixth or seventh attempt to install it. I thought I was going to have to actually just do it from 
like the live environment like testing thing but luckily i was able to get it to install in the end back on the desktop now and something else that helps you sort of install and go with something like ubuntu studio is they have special uh, menu entries made so typically with kde you'd have this menu down so you know development tools for programming internet media office all that kind of stuff it's a fully kitted out operating system it gives you everything you would need for just typical computer use but ubuntu studio also always includes these three special categories audio production graphic design and video production where they can have specialized pieces of software categorized exactly where you might want to get to them so we start with audio production it also then gives us subcategories even for things like plugins and uh, midi utilities mixers things like that but scrolling down here we have the main heavy hitters i'd say of free and open source audio software ardor the digital workstation audacity uh dg edit which is drum gizmo it's a pretty good drum plugin lmms which is another digital audio workstation although i don't know how good it is for actual audio i think it's used a lot more for sequencing a muse score that is a free and open source notation suite of software it i i have started using it more and more over things like a guitar pro or things like sibelius i'm actually quite a big fan of it one thing i would suggest though to the ubuntu studio team actually is to use the flat pack version as this is muse score 3 whereas i believe at, at the current time of recording the current version of muse score is 4.4 so this is quite an outdated version it, it, it's fine to use it's just i would rather have something that is it doesn't matter if something is a point release behind but when it's a whole number release behind you typically want to have it added to the software other than that we have general plugins and software instruments that you can use for audio under graphics design, you have your general programs, but they also do have specialist subcategories for graphic utilities and photography. But the main ones here we're going to look at are Blender, Darktable, the GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. It's somewhat seen as a free and open source equivalent to something like Photoshop. However, so is Critter. And I know that there's big arguments between people as to which these they prefer. So Ubuntu Studio gives you both. Perfectly good either way, whichever one you want to choose. Inkscape, which is more like an equivalent to something like Illustrator, so it works with vector graphics. Vector graphics are graphics which will, as you zoom in or zoom out, or rather I should say, as you expand or contract the image, it will actually make sure that it retains its detail. If you've ever zoomed into a photograph, you'll know it gets all pixelated and blurry. But if you have a vector graphic, like a line drawing style thing, if you zoom into it, it'll keep its detail. So it's very, very good for things like logos. Ocular, I would always like bringing this up. It's just a really, really good PDF viewer. Uh, so good, I actually use it when I'm on Windows as well. And under video production, we have, once again, Blender, which uh, I glossed over that a second ago, but it is a 3D design program, which can be used for animation. There's loads of YouTube channels that go into it in way more depth for people who actually use it and understand it, because I know it's quite, quite in-depth software. Very, very good, though. Very, very useful. It's just not something I do specifically. DVDNG, which you can mix with K3B. This is for burning CDs. For people who, like me, who are millennials or older, who still remember CDs, and in fact, I still have a Blu-ray drive, which is a reader writer in my computer, uh, you can burn yourself some ZDs and things from there. Cajun Live, which is my personal favorite video editing software. This particular video was edited on that. OBS Studio, which is screen recording and live streaming. You've probably heard of this before. Loads of YouTubers and streamers use it. Um, I'm actually also using this to record this specific video as well. But with that, that is just dipping our toe into the ocean that is Ubuntu Studio and all it can offer. If you like the idea of using a Linux system and you are much like me, an artist, be it an audio artist, a visual artist, whichever it may be, it is a fantastic operating system. Also for daily use, I use this all the time, that you can use anywhere. Now, say you're like me and you're not hugely into KDE. Well, you can actually use something called the Ubuntu Studio Installer which is this piece of software right here. Now, it's almost odd when it's attached to Ubuntu Studio proper, as what this is supposed to be used for is converting a different Ubuntu system that uses a different desktop environment to being Ubuntu Studio, but with that desktop environment. So for myself personally, I like to use the XFC desktop environment. So I install Zubuntu, or Xubuntu if you like to call it. Then I install the Ubuntu Studio installer just through my normal package manager. And then I can convert that into being Ubuntu Studio. So it'll do things like adding the low latency kernel on boot. It will do things like adding pipe wire and pre-configuring it. And it'll add all the packages we need to make it a Ubuntu Studio system. 
If you want Mate, Ubuntu Mate, then install it. If you want GNOME, then you would install just normal Ubuntu and then add this on top. So if you like the idea of the software, but you don't necessarily want to use the decimal drive that it comes with, you can convert any Ubuntu system you want into that. So I hope that's given you a good first look at the latest version of Ubuntu Studio. And if you enjoyed, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.